Welcome back to Faces Behind the Business on Village Connector TV, continuing our discussion, our conversation, with Nancy DeLuca Stemple, the Executive Director of the Learning Community International. And I feel like we're coming down the home stretch here now. We, we've covered a lot of good stuff. Hopefully, parents are starting to see the picture of what the educational experience could be for their children if they would take us, take the road less traveled, we'll say. There you go. So we're going to talk a little bit now about what the role of the student is in the learning experience. So tell us a little bit about that. The role of the student can change um, based on the age group, age level. And um, as K through five and middle school and high school, um, the kids are really um, sharing openly with the advisor and the parents to what they want to learn and what, what inspires them. And sometimes there's a learning process that takes, that takes on um, if they're coming out of a traditional setting. There's sometimes they're a little leery about the amazing opportunity that they have. There's a lot of flexibility to explore and learn. And if they're used to a standard kind of, you know, traditional um, education model, it takes them a while to break out of that. You almost have to decondition them from the belief that the teacher is there to dictate how they're going to learn, what they're going to learn, and when they're going to learn it. Yeah, so there's, there's a process, and it depends on who the student is, and the advisor can carefully and slowly have that conversation to move them along. Um, and sometimes even the parents are a little nervous. They want to be anchored. The child's ready to go, but the parents are not. So there's a little learning curve there that happens. At the high school level, it's about really developing a personal relationship with the advisor and being very honest and comfortable with um, voicing what, what, what they would like to do in their program. And if there's, um, if there's something that they want to explore, um, typically um, students look at a full credit of something, but we do a lot of explorations where they're getting maybe a quarter of a credit to just try things out. So that's their role is to have this open, honest relationship and communication with the advisor. Now, I love what you just said here because the real world is about trying different things. Sure. We penalize people in the traditional academic environment for wanting to experiment. We're afraid we got to take something in class that we know we'll do well at because ultimately the goal is the grade, not the learning experience right. itself. But when you can craft your own customized and individualized learning experience, it's actually very, that's where the empowerment is coming from. You yes. keep talking about empowering the learning experience. Correct. That's what we're talking about is that you're no longer limited by just what the academic objective is of getting a grade. You're actually experiencing something that may or may not be relevant to you but you might as well find out now correct and that's one of the beautiful th think about how many people graduate from college with a degree that they have no use for because someone told them that's what you should study right and so this is this is where shifting your mindset about what the learning experience ought to be for a student really comes into play that's one of the things I absolutely loved about and continue to love about the TLCI learning experience and you could, if your long-term goal is to apply to a university, and there are prerequisites that come with that. So you're like, oh, I don't have enough time. I, I can't, I don't, time is of the essence. I don't have enough time to explore. I need to get all these courses in you know, to apply to a university. Um, usually it's 24 credits to graduate from high school. Most of our students graduate with more because they do take time to explore. So they have those, co those core courses there that they need as prerequisites, but they also have the freedom to explore with other things. And when you're in this kind of setting, you have a lot more time at, at, at your disposal to explore. And um, so you have that, you have those explorations and you have the, um, the core courses you need to um, have prerequisites for university admissions. So really, the student's role in this process is to understand and believe that they play a role in deciding what they want to learn and how they want to learn. And so they really need to be candid about that so that the learning experience really ends up being what they want rather than settling for what they think they could have gotten. Not only that, we depend on them. Otherwise, the learning community's philosophy is just an interesting idea. If those students aren't out there doing what we say they're allowed to do and excelling and, 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 and finding the joy of learning and creating the life worth living, then we have nothing. It, we're depending on them to, to participate. And that's why graduation is always so amazing every year when we have our graduations and the students speak to their journeys. 
my favorite time of the year and it makes me inspired to continue to do what I do because it works. So it took me a little while to get my head around what you just said back when we were first exploring. The Learning Community International isn't designed to replicate the traditional curriculum from a high school or middle school or an elementary school. It's designed to liberate you from that and to put you in a position where the learning experience becomes practical and meaningful because it's what you want to learn. We go to high school, we go to middle school, we go to elementary school mostly because it's required by law. That's right. And we're studying what's required by law the way that it has been dictated by the system. So the Learning Community International is really about liberating you to study what's required by law the way you want to study it, at the level and depth that you want to study it. Now, of course, there are some requirements. You've got some core curricula that needs to be considered, and you talked about the basics, you know, reading, writing, math, all that kind of stuff. But aside from those basics that everybody should have, everything else is up to you and how you want to prepare yourself for your future. And those, four, those core courses there, you can study and understand the, those four core courses in a very thematic, interesting way based on what is inspiring to you. So you can get those, those, those core courses um, satisfied. And depending on your long-term goal, if you're looking at a university admission, if you're looking at be, you know, starting your own business, if you're looking to go to the community college, that four years of high school can look very different based on where you're headed. Well, just like we talked about earlier, that in wood shop and metal shop, everyone made keychains and ma napkin holders. Right. If you wanted to go beyond the keychain or the napkin holder, you wouldn't have that flexibility in the traditional academic environment. Right. But you could have gotten those same skills and that same exposure to that concept doing virtually anything that you chose to do. Right, if you're in a school setting and everyone's making um, keychains and you'd say, actually, I would like to make a dog leash. Sorry, you can't make a dog leash, that's next year. Exactly. And so this, this is like, you wanna make a dog leash? Let's make a dog leash. And that's. <laughs> That's important because students need to know that they can speak up. This is the Absolutely. role of the student. They can speak up and say exactly what it is they want to learn. You told me a story, it was humorous, but it was serious, about a student who was being flippant about what they wanted to learn. They wanted to learn about skateboards. Right. And, this and you called their bluff on it by showing them how to create an entire curriculum centered around skateboards. So tell me a little bit about right. that. And that was actually Manfred. That was the principal director when he was doing advising. And um, the student had come out of high school, out of a traditional high school setting. Um, he was not doing very well. And um, his parents took him out. And he really was not believing and and uh, what these um, opportunities were were for him so we, we were really trying to like you know have that dialogue with him and so hit most of his answers were shrugging his shoulders you know I don't know you know and not saying much to us and so finally we said well what would you like to do if you uh, what would get you up every morning what would really inspire you to get up in the morning and he went skateboarding that's what I want to do kind of like that's what I want to do ladies skateboarding and so it was like all right let's talk about that and long story short, we're talking geometry, physics. Um, he started building his own skateboards, um, talking about ball bearings, inspiring younger kids how to do this. And he kind of became a little bit of an icon among the younger kids that he had this specialty. Um, he started kind of writing papers and doing research on skateboarding and surfing, um, reading biographies on, on um, uh, the different skateboard people. Uh, but the people. thing that was striking to me is he covered virtually every topic centered around skateboards. He yeah. was able to cover math and science. Right. You, you, you had him measuring how far he could jump and the right. trajectory trajectory and things right. of that nature. He reported on that like it was a math science fair type project. Yeah. He was able to write papers on it. Right. And, and he had wood and metal shop because he was dealing with ball bearings and, and, and the, the skateboard platforms. And the real thing that was what made us really happy is that love of learning and that light that's so natural in humans was turned back on. He was then inspired to go on didn't think math had any relevance in his life until he really started doing that. So it really turned him around, and um, that was what was so satisfying to us. Now, for people's benefit, parents, we don't want you to think that your, your kids are going to be learning 
everything that needs to be learned by learning how to do skateboarding. But that's just an example of how you can bring a child yeah. out of their shell and really help them to understand that everything that they do in life can be a learning experience that adds value to who they can become. Sure. So th I love that story. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry if it made you uncomfortable to bring that out, but that was one of my favorite stories. I mean, that, it's I, won't a good say, one. I won't say that that's the one that sold us, right. but that did play a role because I was visualizing my son Nolan and, and the things that he's interested mm -hmm. in. He's interested in so many things. And they were never going to be addressed in any of his academic experience in the traditional mm -hmm. schooling system. And so when you told the skateboard so story, it kind of sealed the deal. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. that's why I asked Nancy to share that one with you. Now, again, we're coming down the home stretch. I want to thank you for staying with us this long. We have one more segment that we're going to talk about that I know parents are going to be interested in knowing about. When we come back, we're going to talk about do I get a transcript and grades, and will my parent, will, will my, will my uh, student be given the same g disadvantaged at all by going through the learning community inter international process compared to a traditional learning environment? So come on back and find out the answer to those questions. <laughs> 